Hi, this is Hobson Lane, your professor in CISC 179 at Mesa College. Introduction to Python. So I'm going to help you finish up this course with your final project. Hopefully you've already gotten a good start on it. So all of this will be uh, help you uh, finish up your project that you're working on. Um, when I'm starting on a project like this, the first thing I do is take a bunch of notes. And the notes that you see here are actually data that we can learn how to load um, and then run. So first thing I want to do is design my game. So I'm going to have I'm going to have several different rooms. I'm call the first room morning, and a guy named Sam walks in and says something, and then. Uh, right after this is all this text is all on one line just to make it a little easier for me to process in my um, in my script so i'm going to read the first line and look for these hashes and then get the name of the room that i want to go to that's also called the state when you have um, a system like we're building the, a game where the game maintains the state of the program Next thing you want to do is, of course, give a description to that room. So something you're going to print out to the screen. And then after that, the next lines are all the different commands. And I've just given single character commands to make it a little easier to play. And we can check on the user's input to make sure that they are among those that are allowed. I've also, you might notice that I've, I've given some hints as to what those letters are that are going to work, like B for Bing or Y for U.com and P for find.com, PH find. But um, that gives me another idea. I'll put in an F for that find uh, state um, so that if the user types F instead of P, um, they will still go to the same site. Um, so that's one of the handy things about a dictionary is you can have multiple keys going to the same place. Um, and so I've got different ways that the user can type that first character and go to different places. For exit, I've got the X and the E. For find, I've got the P and the F. And then, um, and then once it gets to another room, there'll be another hash at the beginning or double hash at the beginning of the room name. And then I'll have the description and some more commands the user can type. And you can see that after the colon, this kind of looks like a dictionary, but it's not. It's just text, of course. Um, but um, it gives the name of a room that the user will go to if they type that key. So this is the data structure that I came up with. Um, it's not quite yet a data structure. It's more just notes about a data structure. And markdown files are great for creating human readable notes. Um, so these headings are the hashes. Um, I'm, just, I'm just going to read it in with my program uh, and create a data structure inside my program. And the thing, the, the format that I think I'm gonna use for this is a dictionary of dictionaries. So it'll be each one of these will be a key in the dictionary referring to the room. That way I can go to a particular room in the dictionary just by using that key. And then within that, I'll have another dictionary of all the commands, as well as the description of the room, plus all of the commands that are in that room. And that'll give me everything I think I need in order to run a game, a text adventure. So let's see how that works out. Let's look at my Python script. So I created two functions. The first one is to read in that markdown file, that text file with the hashes and all. Let's make the text a little bigger for you. And so I'm gonna open up that file and I'm gonna read all the lines in. Turns out files have a read lines thing, which is kind of handy. So I don't have to do any parsing or anything just to get all the lines out. But I am gonna have to recognize the difference between those three different kinds of lines that were in that file. I've got one for the state name that starts with the hash or double hash. Doesn't really matter what I put there. I made it uh, not matter. Just that first character is all it's checking. And then the, the next one is going to check to see that it's got this pattern here where it's got a colon, a single character, and then a colon. Um, and that's going to be the one that tells me the commands and the rooms, the destination rooms for those commands. The last one is going to be if there's no special pattern, if there's no special character at the beginning or 
at the first character or the second character. So this is colon is going to be at the second character, of course, and I'm looking for that. But if it doesn't have either of those, either a hash at the beginning or a colon at the second character, then it must be just a description of the room. And so I'm just going to uh, create the description with that. Uh, and so this is what it looks like. As you can see, I have three different um, conditions that I'm checking for. Uh, I've got the else at the bottom, which is the, the global everything else condition. And then we've got the, the hash condition at the very beginning. Um, so if I see that hash, I'm going to strip it off. I'm going to I'm going to strip off hashes both from the beginning and the end. I could have used L strip since the hashes are only at the left. L means L strip means left strip. Uh, but I use strip so that it would it would pull off one, two, three, as many hashes as I have there and get rid of them all. Um, I'm also, right after that, stripping off the white space. So if there's any white space at the beginning or the end of the line, I'll get rid of that too. Uh, and then I'm lower casing it so that all of my keys are lowercase. Whether or not I capitalize them in the text file or the data, it's just going to lowercase it. And then I'm creating this graph, which is basically a map of the game and all the rooms and how they're connected together. May even try to show you what that graph looks like uh, visually in a moment um, after this video. I'll record a separate video to do that so you can get an idea of what this graph data structure is. Um, uh, you can think of it as like a social graph of all the connections between people. Uh, this is all the connections between rooms, how you can get from one room to the next. Um, so that's the, the graph that we've got here. And what else? So now we need the edges of that graph, the connections between the rooms. We've got the room names up here and the hash lines. And we've got the connections going here. Um, and so inside of this dictionary, uh, the outer dictionary for the graph, I'm going to go to that room for that key. That key is the name of the room. And then I'm going to go to that particular location. And I'm going to... And I've already created an empty dictionary for that room. And so now I'm going to fill that room with some commands. Um, I'm going to, so the very first character on the line is going to be the key in that, uh, so whatever it was, a B for Bing. So B will go here as the key for that inner dictionary. So the outer dictionary comes first, and the second inner key, inner dictionary, key appears uh, second in the second square brackets. And then I'm going to assign to that inner dictionary the value, which is everything else on that line, everything that comes after that colon. Do you remember what two position is in all of those letter, colon, space, and then the room name? Is that going to be the room name? Is that going to be the space character? Where's, where's it going to start? Well, two, of course, Python starts at zero and then goes to one and two. So this will be actually the third character, which is going to be a space. Uh, it's going to be after, so zero, one, two. So this actually represents the space, but then I'm stripping it off any spaces at the beginning and end, so it goes away. And I'm also lowercasing it again to make sure that it's the same as this other name has the same spelling and, and capitalization so that we can recognize them all when we're looking for them in the dictionary uh, automatically with the computer. It's really important to be consistent in your spelling of things like variable names and, and even uh, keys in dictionaries. Uh, and so that's why I've lowercased and stripped everything. Uh, next, uh, anything else is going to be the description. So we're going to add that also as a, a special key, a much longer key. Instead of a single character, I gave it a whole word for description. And this will be the thing that I print out at the beginning of each room before I'm even checking for all those commands. Okay, great. And it's going to loop through all of those lines and pull out all that information. And everything, every single line will go someplace. I had a blank line, then that would probably end up ruining things because it would probably overwrite the um, uh, the description. I'm sure, or it might even create a bug as I'm trying to check for things that aren't there, like the second or third characters in the second character or the third character in the in the string that's an empty string. Um, that might cause a problem. 
So, um, but anyway, uh, that's a bug that I've avoided because my data file doesn't have any blank lines. So everything is one of those three things. And if there's there's not two descriptions, this is all on one line. So the whole thing should come in as one description. I've played the game, so it seems to work. Um, at least it did before I started playing with it and editing it. So I tried to clean it up a little bit uh, in order to show you how it works. Anyway, uh, back to the code. So we've got the, the play game function. that will actually go through that graph and do everything. Now, because a dictionary is not ordered, you don't know where to start the game. And so I needed to return that first room that it was read that when it read in the file, it assumes that the very first line is the root first room name. And so that's going to be returned so that you can call it with that first room name so it knows where to plop the player down on this graph of all the different rooms. So we're going to create that. And we're going to put the user in that first room. Um, we're going to also hold a list of all the visited rooms in case you need that later on to display any interesting information, like how many rooms they had to go through before they finished, some sort of a score, or whatever you want to record, you can put in this visited rooms list. And so while you have a room that's not empty, so as long as this isn't none or an empty string, then this should work. And it should keep going through this loop until the user gets out or exits the game. Um, so it's going to go to the, it's going to append that room name, that start room name to the beginning of the list. It's going to print out the room description, and then it's going to check to see, um, if that room has any, um, so this particular key for the room, for the room within the graph, that's going to retrieve the outer dictionary. So if that's just an empty dictionary, the length will not be greater than one. It'll, it'll only be one if it's an empty room with just a description. If it doesn't have any commands, then there's no need to check for commands. And so that's what this is checking for. It needs to make sure that it has some commands before it checks for them. And it's going to default for the command of space. Um, that should That's just uh, to give us a, a placeholder. Um, in case we want to have some commands that are a space that are kind of the default. So you see, I've created a space command here, um, uh, not at all related to the uh, the US Air Force Space Command, but anyway, or that big uh, facility down uh, war, uh, I don't know, there, there's a big, a big center down in uh, downtown near the airport for uh, Space Command. Anyway, um, uh, in San Diego, of course. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? So the space is there, and that's a, that's a default command. Um, many of these just only have that as the only command. And um, while the if that command is among in that dictionary, this is an interesting way to check to see if um, if the command is in as as one of the keys in that list of keys that are part of the dictionary. So every dictionary has a, is a bunch of keys and values. If it's empty, then of course, nothing will ever be in there. Um, but if it has something, if it has any commands at all, then, um, so we wouldn't be in here if it didn't have any commands. So we're good to go there. And um, uh, if, if that command that the user has typed is in the, uh, in the graph for that the dictionary that the inner dictionary contains all the commands. Now there's one interesting hack that I just noticed. If the user description is actually a valid command, all of this uh, code would still allow the user to type that word description. And that would become the new command if they type it here at the input, that becomes the command. And then command that the word description would be a key in that inner dictionary. And it would just, um, then what would it do? It would say room equals um, that command, which would be that the room name would then be the entire description of the room, those multiple words. And of course, that's not going to work out very well. It's going to cause a bug later on or get stuck in that room. I haven't actually tried that. We might hack it and see what happens. Um, but anyway, um, if 
if it, it stays there until it gets a valid command that it can find um, uh, and exit, as you saw, and so, some other commands are there besides just the, the game commands. Um, and then it goes to that room. It actually, whatever that room value was for the, whatever the value was for that key for that command, that single character command, that's going to be the room name that's put in the room. And um, if it's an empty dictionary, then the room's going to be empty. And we're checking for that room out here on the outside. So the game's going to keep running as long as the room has something in it. An empty string is equivalent to none or false. And so this while room will, will stop the loop as soon as this becomes an empty string or anything other than that, that evaluates to the Boolean false. If you put a bool, the word bool around an empty string, that's going to turn it into false. And so this is going to turn into false uh, when we've gotten to the end of the... So there's some of these um, rooms that don't have any commands. Uh, so these are the, the ones for the winning, uh, I guess the winning, let's look at the winning state and see if it has any next. Okay, exit only has a description and it doesn't have any commands. So that's one that's going to go, that's going to end the game. The win room also uh, is going to go to, it doesn't have any commands. So that's going to also end the game. Uh, the busted one is going to go to exit and... Um, uh, so those are the only two I think they're going to end the game, the win or the exit. Um, and busted is kind of the lose um, state of the game as well. So it should all work if we just run those two functions. First, we need to read in the graph and the first room um, by reading in that markdown file. Now, I told you you should use like a CSV file or JSON or maybe even YAML. Um, this is not typically used for data, but I've just used it here because I figured out a good way to put data into it that I could read with a relatively short, um, you know, these three if statements, these three if conditions that I needed to check. So I, I figured it'd be pretty easy to do it in a markdown file. So it's both human readable and machine readable. Uh, CSV is a lot more machine readable. Uh, but Markdown's a little bit more human readable. Okay, um, so once you've got all the rooms and the graph, um, all the all the the network of connections or the graph uh, of all of the connections between the rooms, then you can play the game. You just send that in along with the first room that you got from. You send both of those things in, and. To give you a little a quick hack, um, this is another thing. Well, no, I'm not going to go there. I'll just keep it simple. Um, you could use this thing called quarks, and you could pull these together into a dictionary and then pass them here as keyword arguments or quarks, or star star quarks, if you wanted to put the dictionary in there. Any of you who've looked into that um, will understand what I'm talking about, but that's a really advanced technique and there's no need to do that on your final project. Uh, so now, finally, uh, once, once you've won, I'm gonna print out a score. Now let's play the game and see how it runs before you get too bored. It's a pretty fun game. I had fun doing research for it. It actually requires a little, uh, play around with Bing and other search engines to, to see how these sorts of questions would end up in the real world. So this is kind of a real world adventure. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get over to that command. So I'm, I'm going to open up my terminal. In your case, on a Windows machine, it would probably be git bash or the spider terminal that where you would do the what I'm about to do here. Uh, make it a little bigger so you can see what's going on. Oh, uh, shoot. It's a little too big. It's coming off the screen. Let's make it smaller. And now, let's see what we got here. Okay. Maybe you can see that. Um, so, next, let's, um, let's check out the... So I need to, I have a script. Uh, uh, what, is, what do we call that? Spring 2024. 
this is the folder name where you're going to go to on GitLab um, to submit your final report. And so that's where I've put it, my submission here. And it's in this SRC folder. And inside of there, it's in the, um, let's, see, LS, let's see what we've got here, in the CS179. And then inside of there, there's a data-driven folder for the, the final project, CD data-driven. LS, and you can see uh, oh, at least two other people have submitted their reports. I've moved them into the correct folder, and they are good to go here. So mine is as well. So let's play mine. Uh, play lane.python lane.py. Um, so it goes straight. Let's look and see what it just did. So whenever you run a Python script, it's going to look either it's going to run everything in here, but these are just function definitions. So nothing happens when you run through those function definitions. And this allows you, this is a special little if condition. This is a hidden variable that exists in any uh, Python program. There's a couple others that are really interesting. You can, you can look around on the Python documentation if you're interested in discovering hidden variables. But um, this lets you know when it's being run as a script and only do these things. The other way you could run, of course, do this, you could import lane, and that would just bring in these two functions. But if you want it to actually run, then you're going to run those two functions by calling Python on it. And so that's what this does. Um, let's bring this back over so you can see what the game looks like. Here's a long description of that first room. It's pretty complicated. Uh, Sam walks in and you lift your head from the news you're reading with an enthusiastic, good morning, Sam. And he's not so happy. Uh, and so you have to deal with this by deciding what to go, when he says something under his breath, damn it, Timnit, uh, you, he walks into his office. You, knew, you need to um, Google some stuff to figure out what he's talking about in case he's angry at you or whatever. So you need to go to either Bing or you. Google has become such um, such garbage that most people are moving on off, off to other tools. But as you'll see in this game, even Bing has become pretty garbage, especially when you're asking it stuff about ChatGPT or Sam Altman, because um, they're kind of in cahoots to to pollute the infosphere with a lot of uh, bad information, um, especially if it makes them money. But anyway, so we've got uh, so you got to choose between Bing, you, and um, and find. I don't want you to win the game too quickly, so let's go to Bing first, and you get into it. Says uh, it pops up with a link. Uh, it's repulsive to me. AI experts, Timnit uh, expert Timnit Gebru says she'd rather go, and links it links to the MSN article. Uh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty interesting. It looks like Timnit is uh, a famous person that's got got a got a beef with Sam Altman. So let's check it out before Sam gets to his computer and starts to monitor my computer work as his executive assistant. Well, it looks like we lost because um, unfortunately that MSN article no longer exists. It looks like uh, Microsoft's pretty good at cleaning up the internet whenever it's their news network reporting on them and all the horrible things they, they do to, to people, to famous people like Timnit Gebru. Who a little bit of background? Timnit Gebru was the was one of the ethics uh, researchers at Google before she was fired uh, for that ethics research. Uh, she wanted to publish a paper about how dangerous large language models like ChatGPT are, and um, Google didn't like that because they have all sorts of plans about how to make money off of large language models, and um, so they fired her, and um, and her boss was fired. The whole ethics department at Google was fired as a result of this big beef. And uh, of course, Tim has gone on to create beef with uh, ChatGPT and Microsoft and all their work in large language models as well. So Sam Altman doesn't like them. Microsoft doesn't like her. So they're trying to hide her from the news and all this controversy. You'll find her on Wikipedia, though. Uh, what a great place to, to deal with um, misinformation. So. Um, if you'd like to, uh, so this this is so play my game. If you'd like, you can you can copy it from GitLab. Uh, I'll show you. Make sure you're you're going to the right place to submit yours and to find mine. 
you can go to, uh, to GitLab and you're of course free to use whatever data structure you want. Um, uh, Helena has come up with a really good one in CSV file format, sort of. It's kind of a colon separated file. So CSV, I guess, could stand for colon as well as uh, uh, comma. So she's come up with, she put a colon in, in each of her lines to, to delimit her, her text uh, for her game. So anyway, inside, you want to, when you go to GitLab, just type, I think the best way to get there quickly without um, getting distracted by uh, whatever your browser wants to send you to. Um, most, of course, Microsoft loves you to go to GitHub rather than GitLab. So to avoid that, you probably want to just type gitlab.com. And once you go there, though, GitLab's going to try to get you involved in whatever your dashboard is there. But instead, you want to get rid of all that. And so after GitLab, let's just type Mesa Python. And that should send us to the Mesa Python project that I've set up on GitLab. There's a few repositories there that I'm working on, but um, the one you want is, of course, the CISC 179 Spring 2024 directory. And that's where you're, and then tucked inside of there is the, this is a very common name for a folder containing source code like Python scripts. So you want to go to the SRC file. And inside of there, there's another folder called CS179. I just misnamed that folder. Um, uh, but there, inside of there, you will find the um, data-driven folder. And that's where you want to, that's where you'll find my game. Um, this is before I fixed it up. So it's going to be an older version of that um, without the functions. Uh, you can see it's a, it still has a lot of comments. It's almost more comments than code. Pretty simple file because I came up with a really good data structure that's, that makes it all easy. So uh, feel free to play around with all this. Um, there, uh, there's, there's a, is a bug, I think, in this particular version of the code. I, I left it that way just to make you work. And so you can't really just copy and paste this code and get it to work. You're gonna to have to do a little debugging if you wanna to, wanna to follow this pattern. But um, uh, have fun. Uh, look forward to seeing your text adventures. I've already had fun playing a few, and I will um, I will let you know with and feedback on your game how well you did. And um, uh, I'm gonna only. It doesn't matter if the game is is all that much fun, but it'd be uh, it needs to have good use good python conventions and demonstrate you understand how to write things like functions and dictionaries or other data structures like lists and strings and then how to use if conditions and how to store that data in a file and read files in if you can do all of that and you can put together something that's interesting to you uh, it doesn't matter if it's interesting to me or anyone else I uh, just want to make sure you can build a program that does what you want it to do. And if you can do that, you've you've won mm -hmm. and you can win the uh, the game of life. Uh, uh, program or be programmed. That's uh, that's the that's the game of life in this world that we live in with everybody trying to program our brains with uh, misinformation or advertisements or money making schemes. So. Um, Look forward to having you program your own brain and programming the world in Python. Have a great day and good luck on your final project.